Hello everyone, this is Cheyenne Storm, director of Proof of Chaos, and this is the effects breakdown for our film. Uh, first things first, uh, you can never do too much testing. Um, testing is probably uh, the thing that, that helped us the most. Um, we knew that there were uh, some things we had done before that, uh, that we could pull off uh, pretty simply, pretty easily, and there were other things that we had never attempted before, so we decided to, uh, to run some tests and see if uh, we can pull them off uh, the way that uh, we wanted them to look. So first up here is, uh, this is the very first test that I did. Uh, I built my first lightsaber and played with it in my apartment and uh, sort of swung at the camera. And here it is, uh, rotoscoped. Um, just trying to get a nice yellow-green color and, and a nice white blade. Uh, this test here is, uh, we did a, a blue screen test out in the desert. Um, stood a piece of blue screen behind me, uh, shot it real quick, and then uh, saw if we could, uh, here's the same shot composited with the identical background, just cropped uh, 235 to 1. Um, other, a couple of the other things we wanted to see, we wanted to see how the camera would react and how some of our stunts would look on camera. And this particular shot here was supposed to be the first uh, uh, opening charge. Here um, with uh, with this rig here, what we did is I went out and bought a, uh, a half harness, a mountain climbing harness which goes around your legs and waist uh, and took a couple pieces of webbing, uh, mountain climbing webbing, rock climbing webbing and turned it into a full harness. We cut a hole in the back of the shirt, tied a rope to it and uh, I'm on a, on a mini trampoline, so uh, we do the countdown and Jody uh, hits me and I go up in the air and our stunt guy, Matt Lightman, yanks me backwards onto a futon. Uh, I suggest more than one futon because uh, one just, uh, I was actually quite sore afterwards. Um, this here is um, basically uh, the walking on water shot, the continuation of the walking on water shot. Uh, in which um, we have Jody standing on uh, a ladder, uh, a step ladder, which is placed over a bunch of uh, cinder blocks in the water to uh, make it look like he's standing on the surface of the water. And, uh, you know, sometimes your effects work a little too good, and a lot of people didn't notice that he was walking on water. It just looked like he was walking through very shallow water. Um, so not everything works out the way you planned it. Um, this was probably the worst looking footage that we had. This was shot on the third day um, with the PD-150. And you can see it's really washed out. Um, very blown out, uh, and uh, so what I did here is I took the same footage, a little bit better looking, and uh, did uh, a little bit of color correction and uh, slowed the film down. I uh, did the same thing for the next clip. Um, what you'll notice uh, with the difference between video and film, uh, video tends to, to be a little bit more saturated than film, uh, so it has a lot less contrast, and uh, usually the colors just don't seem to add up. So in order to get your video to look more like film, uh, to color correct it as it were, uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, adjust your brightness and contrast, um, your color balance, your saturation, sometimes your gamma. And in this case, uh, the reason you see the frame bouncing like that is this, uh, this footage is actually slowed down a little bit, which on the, on the web you're probably not going to notice it, but if you're watching this on the DVD you'll see a distinct difference between video and this. This looks more like film here. and. Uh, Okay, so our next section is, um, is rotoscoping. So, um, rotoscoping, we did a, a, a system in which uh, I would lay a white layer. Oh, this is our, this is our footage. It's been film looked um, and cropped 235 to 1. Uh, we used a mask. You can see the mask right there at the bottom, for the bottom of the saber. And we're going to extend that mask up to the top so it covers the entire shaft of our, our stick there. And then we're going to use that to mask out our white layer and for some animated it uh, will cover up the entire stick like so. Um, but that's not enough. Uh, so you can see right there, I had a little bit of one, one pixelated, uh, or one pixel of feather to the mask, which gave it a nice white shaft or, or beam for the, for, the, for the saber itself. From there, we'll duplicate that layer three times. So we have four layers. And there's a more detailed uh, version of this somewhere online that you can find on, on the force.net about how to do this. But eventually those four layers, each successively feathered out, um, will give you a nice white glow. Then the next step is to, is to make that glow uh, uh, color. So um, without going into all the, the details, um, we just selected a color, um, the orange for this particular one. Uh, we uh, made sure that it, uh, that, it, that it wasn't oversaturated. One of the biggest problems with, with sabers that I've seen in a lot of fan films is that the, uh, the colors on the, on the sabers are oversaturated and they don't look real. So here's our sequence um, before it was rotoscoped. Um, 
you can see uh, uh, I'm only using a stub of a saber there, not a full saber, um, just to avoid uh, hitting me just in case there was a problem. Um, and uh, here we'll go by section by section. There, that's uh, really bad rotoscoping. This was from the early, early section, uh, early version of the film. You can actually see the stick sticking out behind the, the mask. Here we have it, um, I had to kind of guess there to where, it would, where the saber would be. Um, and here I'm just showing you, this is just the raw footage and then just the one single mask laid over the saber. And then here what we're going to do is I'm going to show you that uh, what the layer looks like without the footage in the background. So we'll drop the footage out and uh, there you see the, the white shaft. And most of your rotoscoping will look like this. If you just drop the images out, you'll just see little white lines with glows streaking all over the place until you add color. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, again a little bit of what's going to happen with this. Um, you can just watch the sequence here and uh, see that here we've got um, sabers against black and then sabers overlaid over the footage and you can see what those look like. You can also see a little bit of a, uh, on my saber, um, which is a green one, I, there's actually two layers. That one's got a little bit of yellow glow, of a yellow glow to it. Um, what I did is I took that white with the yellow glow and then put another green set of glows over the top of it to give me a yellow green with a little bit more yellow close to the saber and green further out, which I thought looked a little bit better than just the solid green all the way across. And uh, that pretty much covers the rotoscoping section. Now here's the whole, here's the whole sequence. Um, completely rotoscoped and affected. The best effect is the effect that you don't notice. Now in this shot, uh, you see the shadow creep in from the right, and uh, but if you look at the original footage, which I'll show you here in a second, you see that Jody, uh, who plays the, uh, the Sith in the, in the film, is standing there waiting for his cue. So, um, and this always bugged me in the shot, that, that you could see him waiting there. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotoscope his shadow out and create a separate layer for that and drag it off to the right. And then we're going to go in and we're going to uh, take sec a sector here and there's going to be another sector below that um, where the shadow are and we're going to copy the upper right hand corner. We're going to clone that onto a different layer and then paste that layer uh, with feathered edges over the top, and you'll see it right here. It's, there, there's the one one over the top, and here's the other one going to go over the top, and that's going to mask out the shadow. And then we'll just take the, the rotoscope shadow that we have and animate it coming back on screen. So here's the un unaffected, and then there's with the, the middle quadrant blanked out and the bottom quadrant blanked out, and then here's the uh, here's the final shot before we added the uh, 235 to one masking. That's the original and that's the, uh, the changed footage. And that's something that not a lot of people notice and took a lot of work to get there, but if, uh, it's one of those details that you would have noticed if we hadn't done it. Um.